It's about time. Challenge runs are back. Okay, so I was wondering, where is the Broken Sword equivalent in Elden Ring? Like, we've seen it in the Dark Souls games, but for some reason it's not here. So I went with the next best thing, the Weathered Straight Sword. I will be beating the entire game with this sword only. Now I understand it's not the weakest weapon in the game, torches or seals can deal physical damage as well, but this is one of the weakest weapons that's actually classified as a weapon. I can equip Bachelors of War, but no dual wielding, no buffs, I just want to use the sword only. My goal is to not only obviously beat the game with the Weathered Straight Sword, but I want to see if this beginner's weapon can actually carry me throughout the entire game and in the end become a viable weapon. It's pretty straight sword forward, so let's get into it. Oh yeah, and I'll be beating the game in under 15 hours. Hopefully. We'll see. So without further ado, my name is Josh, and I hope you enjoy the video. I gave myself the most professional name I could think of at the moment, Mr. Boob, and, be <laughs> and began our journey. Obviously, I need the weapon for the run first, which is located in Stormvale Castle. The commoners have a chance to drop the weapon, but Margit the Fell is in our way, so I have to take care of him first. I may have summoned some help for this fight, but to be fair, there's no way I could face him with the Weathered Straight Sword, so be quiet, I get it. I promise that every other boss will be sliced and diced with our weathered antique decoration from your grandmother's attic, alright? Limgrave Tunnel was next to gather some stones because I need to upgrade this sword as soon as possible. As I fight this troll, let me just tell you how bad this weapon really is. Some of the negatives include terrible damage, terrible scaling, terrible range, a terrible look, it, doesn't, it looks like a level 2 goblin from an RPG, no unique qualities at all. Like, to give you an idea, the Weathered Straight Sword at plus 3 was still weaker than the Hand Axe that I started with. At plus 4, it beats my starting axe by like, 3 points, and that's it. The Forked Hatchet is known to be an awful weapon too, even with the bleed status. Both weapons fully upgraded, the Hatchet only loses by 4 points, not to mention it has bleed on top of that, and it's a lighter weapon, meaning you'll get more hits off. The only positives that I can think of for the Weathered Straight Sword is that, well, it makes for a good challenge run. <laughs> and actually, the weapon art is pretty good for damage as well as staggering bosses, and that's what I'll really focus on for this weapon. I didn't want to rely solely on damage because that's not going to work, rather, the weapon art. Staggering the bosses and giving myself time to breathe and reset, because these boss fights are going to be much longer than usual. Godric the Grafted was the first real boss that I tussled with, and already, I can tell you that this sword is doing no good. <laughs> what is usually a pit stop has become quite a challenging fight. Godric usually laughs for two seconds in the second phase and then dies, but with the Weathered Straight Sword, I got to see some attacks that I actually forgot he had because the fight went on for that long. I had some intimate clashing between me and the sweaty old man, and, and for the record, I did not enjoy that. This four minute ordeal ended in both of us killing each other, but because he likes to hear himself talk for five minutes, I didn't get the text on screen, therefore I had to do it all over again. If this is a future site for what's to come, I'm not exactly thrilled, but we'll see how it turns out. I did some training against the sentient trees. These are the gold nuggets of all my runs. They drop a healthy amount of runes and are super easy to beat. Most encounters I completed without taking a single point of damage, even with the weathered straight sword. I'm just, I'm truly that good at the game. A quick pit stop for Radagon's Source Seal, as I've done in every single challenge run, and we're off to upgrade our sword to plus nine. This didn't do anything. <laughs> I feel like my damage, dude, my damage was about the same, pretty much. But I'm in too deep now, so let's press on. Against Radagon's Wolf, the weapon art actually was really good. Although to be fair, this boss doesn't have much health in the first place, but regardless, the damage was reasonable. And normally I hate this boss, but he wasn't that bad this time around. The Feed Princess was next, and like Godric, she's not that bad of a boss, which proved to be the case even with one of the worst weapons I've ever wielded. The damage was starting to wane a little bit considering I couldn't even kill the mini Ranalas in one hit. And I thought, this entire time, throughout all of my playthroughs, you have to kill them in order to remove the spell. But this whole time, you just had to hit them. I had no idea. You learn something new in every playthrough, I guess. 
She gave me some pretty good RNG for the second phase, throwing her staff around instead of, you know, casting spells with it. The weapon art did a good chunk of damage, even staggering her at one point. First try Renala, and I have to say, not bad for a starting weapon. The Magma Worm was our next victim, which was light work, nothing crazy to report here. I now have something to report. Yeah, the Dragonic Tree Sentinel was uh, a bit of a pain. I couldn't deal enough damage, nor did I have the resources to finish the fight after about, like, half health. Let's do some upgrading. The Celia Crystal Tunnel was my first stop for some Smithing Stone 5s, just to upgrade the sword a little bit more. What really matters is a fashion change, because all I had on was pretty much the commoner's outfit. And I know exactly what armor set I want. Voila! Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, that's my character for Monster Hunter. Here's the actual outfit, and it holds up nice against the Sentinel this time around. Now, if I'm being honest, the Weathered Straight Sword is still holding up to my expectations. I mean, don't get me wrong, anything else is better. But I have to give credit where credit is due, this dusty old blade is, is doing alright. If there's one thing I'm worried about though, it's the Fire Giant. That HP bar is more threatening than Kratos in Greece. The main discovery throughout this playthrough so far is that the weapon art carries hard. Great damage and even better posture damage. Combine it with the Wondrous Physic to increase stagger and you're stunning some bosses every two hits. This is what I'll base my build around. Posture damage is a great advantage against most bosses, so let's gather a couple of things. I did some quality scaling for both dexterity and strength, equipping the same Ash of War as the default. The Wondrous Physic with the mix I have negates the first hit and increases posture damage, obviously. The Spear Talisman increases my damage for the R2 weapon art since it's considered a thrust attack. The Dagger Talisman increases critical damage by 17%, which is a weird number by the way, why not like 15 or 20? I mean, it's better than 15, so I'll take it. Since we'll be staggering our opponents multiple times, it makes sense that we get off as much damage as possible with the critical hit. The last talisman is hidden behind Radon because I didn't think to kill Alexander first before moving forward in the story. So we can try out what we have now against the Scourge of the Stars. Radon wasn't too crazy, like I could stagger him a few times, but getting the crit wasn't optimal due to his recovery from the penetration position. He just gets up way too fast. Still, I got it a couple of times, but overall, the fight was a breeze. As I've said before, stick to his crotch and you'll be fine. Now, we can slay Alexander to grab the final talisman for the run. Increasing our weapon art by 15, sorry, 10%. Back to Lindo Capital to face Godfrey's ghost, which is more of an appetizer at this point for the next boss, Morgot. Morgoth's fight, I'm usually not excited for on these repeat playthroughs, but the fact that I stunned him four times really says a lot about this build. It's not overbearing, I've stunned Morgoth before an equal amount of times with like the heaviest weapons in the game, but considering the weathered straight sword is of equal staggering power is pretty impressive to me. This fight was really easy, Morgoth is not a fan of being staggered constantly. And keep in mind, my sword is not like overly upgraded or anything, it's at plus 16 right now. Within the mountains, I fought a homeless samurai and stole his face because it gives extra dexterity. I mean, why not? And I have to say, we look disgusting. <laughs> the fire giant was next, and as expected, this is going to be a long fight. Now, I did beat him on the first try because I am an expert at this game, but my usual strategy of getting critical hits wasn't really working here. I staggered him more times than I ever did with the weapon art, so I used that to get some extra hits off, obviously, and I took that time to breathe and reset. Because I'm gonna need that, this was about an 8 minute fight, so funny enough, that's not the worst I've done, but still a long battle of endurance. Especially the second phase, that damage, that damage was hurting me more than it was hurting him. But like I said, we got him on the first try. Unfortunately, the foreskin duo was another story. This fight took me 30 minutes, which, I mean, doesn't seem bad, but those 30 minutes were absolute hell. Even with the fixes, making them more passive just doesn't do it enough justice. My saving grace was, once again, the weapon art. My damage at this point sucked, but the weapon art did enough to pull me through. I mean, at this point, I'm basically just advocating for the square off Ash of War. I mean, it is really good. Two R2 attacks stunned both of them every single time, even without the Wondrous Physic. With that knowledge, I could interrupt certain attacks knowing I would win the collision. One on one, it was one of the easiest fights in the game, but the constant tension of losing the other's position, the fireballs, 
It was a bit stressful, but I persevered, and the Weathered Straight Sword takes yet another victim. Now, Malekith possessed a different issue. Now, because of his fast animations and awkward hitboxes, the weapon art would miss completely, even at close range. There were very few attacks where I could maybe retaliate, considering he's so fast, but even then, it would miss due to the weird angle. I could use normal attacks, but the weapon art just did so much more damage in comparison, it was harder not to use it. Fortunately, Malekith himself, the second phase, was easier to hit, and with some patience, we got him. Every single time, especially with Malekith, I just have to be patient, and it all works out. Even with the Weathered Straight Sword, I mean, it, it, it works. It wasn't all that bad, still in the single-digit territory of attempts. It was the next boss, however, that made me lose it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why haven't I liked the video and subscribed yet? The main issue with this fight is that my damage allowed this encounter to go on much longer than usual. Normally, a joke of a boss fight that I can end before he even finishes his monologue has now become a threat because the spamming of his spells are much more egregious to deal with for longer than 5 seconds. So let me pull back the curtain a little bit. When I go through these challenge runs, I normally take notes in order to remind myself or emphasize certain challenges or goals, whatever the case may be. Allow me to read you this, <laughs> this miniature paper that I wrote down about Gideon after I beat him. Keep in mind, at the time of writing this, I am foaming at the mouth like a rabid animal, I am furious to the point of getting a headache, and I probably bit my old PlayStation 4 controller a few times as well. This is the first sentence. I feel personally attacked. <laughs> Gideon was the worst boss by far. My damage allowed this fight to go on for longer than it should. A boss fight that normally ends within a couple of seconds is now being played out, and I realize now that Gideon is one of the worst bosses I have ever faced in video games. That part was capitalized. I would take the Godskin duo any day when it comes to equal grounds. I would rather rub my face against an old wooden porch, covered in splinters, making me look like the rickety shield. Gideon's issue is that he spams spells constantly. Uh, the rings of light cover a large surface, hover over an area for a certain amount of time, and then come back to him. This makes approaching him dangerous and stupid, which my IQ would be tested brutally as I did the same mistake over and over again. Meanwhile, he's spamming an ungodly amount of spells, which by themselves is not difficult. But they are some of the uh, just most annoying spells to deal with in the game. That one spell where he'll explode after a certain amount of hits is just the worst. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And then I proceeded to write I hate it a, a few hundred more times. <laughs> All it took was patience and getting in a few good hits when I could. I would be cornered, bent over, penetrated, comboed, just the worst things imaginable, but in the end, I took him down. So now that I've calmed down, I can tell you that yeah, this boss fight sucks when you have to endure it, but in hindsight, it's, it's not the worst. I was being a moron, I was making the same mistakes again and again. Regardless, the Weathered Straight Sword claimed victory, and my reward over this obstacle was an easy fight with Godfrey. Two attempts, that was it. It wasn't so much the Weathered Straight Sword that made this fight easy, it's simply because I know this fight very well. If this game literally had a broken sword, I could very well easily beat him with it. Now that doesn't mean the sword didn't do its job, I stunned him like five times, and that's pretty impressive. As per usual on these challenge runs, uh, the final boss proved to be a bit annoying, so I took a quick detour to the Consecrated Snowfield to level up just a bit. Radagon wasn't the problem, it's mainly the stamina needed for this fight, because at this point, my damage was like poking an elephant with a toothpick. It'll eventually kill whatever I'm trying to kill, but it's just gonna take a while. So my first step was gathering the medallion pieces, but I don't have time for that. Commander Neol is a terrible fight, in general, because it's a gank, he has two knights that just accompany him, and it's annoying. If you didn't know, you can actually skip this boss and get the medallion. What you do is you go around the castle side, jump off this ledge at a precise angle, and as you fall down, just keep swinging your weapon all the way down, and eventually, this will pop up.
that was the commander. And I have to say, I love this skip. Now, I'm not gonna do Melania. That, that's not an option at the moment. If I can't beat the final boss, I can't beat Melania. It's the Lord of Blood who I'm trying to challenge. Honestly, one of the easier fights in the game. That doesn't mean I hate it, by the way. It's actually probably my favorite fight in the game thus far. But at this point, after so many runs, I don't need the tier to protect me from his phase transition. I just tank the hits and continue the fight. Just like Godfrey, it took two attempts. That was it. And I now have half a million runes to do whatever I want with it. I should probably use it to fully upgrade my weapon because at this point I realized, oh yeah, my sword is still at plus 24. Those little boosts in health and FP managed to give me the stamina to finish this fight, as well as stagger both of them for the whole time. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I beat Elden Ring with only a weathered straight sword. Here's my time for the run, which was taken after some messing around, so in reality, it was a bit shorter. Oh, and just for the record, I beat both the Dragonlord and Melania with the weathered straight sword only as well. I was surprised when I took down Flacidusex on the first go. And Melania was about, I would say, under an hour, which is really good. It's time for the verdict, because if you remember, my goal was to also see if the Weathered Straight Sword could be a viable endgame weapon. My answer is, yeah, although barely crossing the line. It's like 75%, I would say. The weapon art was the MVP throughout this whole run. I was constantly impressed by not only the damage, but stagger potential. Against bosses that could be staggered, those fights were so much easier. The Weathered Straight Sword struggled, however, against bosses that obviously couldn't be stunned or didn't really care about it, such as Gideon or the Fire Giant, but those were far few in between. All in all, it's an underrated weapon that I'm sure with dual wielding and some proper scaling by someone who knows more about the game than I do, it could be even better. But that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit strained uh, throughout this video. I'm still recovering from my uh, pneumonia slash respiratory infection that I had uh, a few weeks ago. But I wanted to make a challenge run for you guys, and more challenge runs will be coming in the future. I'm going to try to take the channel in a little bit of a different direction. Just doing more challenge runs because you guys enjoy those. I enjoy making them. And so, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone, and of course, stay safe.